Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Venerable Sir. Okay, so um, before we start our today's uh, lesson, I would like to take a moment to uh, read um, our last uh, meeting. We talked about the qualities of the Buddha and uh, some of you actually wrote um, in your own words. So if I would like one of you to actually read that, is there Venerable Sumetta present? Yes, Venerable Sir. Would you uh, please stand up and read what you have written? Okay. Araham, the Buddha never committed a sin even secretly. He has eradicated all defilements. Defilements in plain language means bad thoughts, bad reaction, like anger, hatred, stress, stress, jealousy, gossip, attachment, ignorance, and so on. He, he cut off the ignorance that leads to the endless cycle of birth and death. The Buddha had got rid of all defilements, so he is Araha. Thank you. So <clears throat> that was wonderful, um, but I only get got uh, three uh, writings. I remember there were about 10 uh, of you, but I got only three writings. So that means four or five people did not write um, their writings, right? Their homework, they did not do it. Okay, so uh, you need to uh, try, just like Sumetta and the other friends asked help from them. If you chose a different quality of the Buddha, then you should ask from a friend who know, um, who can help you. So today we are going to um, learn about the Dhamma, which is the second gem in the teachings of the Buddha. Now, let's understand the word Dhamma, because it has different meanings. The first meaning of Dhamma is simply the teachings of the Buddha. And so there are fundamental teachings of the Buddha. For example, four noble truths. Chattu satcha, chattu arya satcha. And so it means Dhamma also means truth of the world. The truth that is common to everybody. For example, dukkha, suffering, is a truth that is common to all beings in the world. Then there is the three characteristics of existence which is also the fundamental teachings of the Buddha. And so Dhamma also means true nature of things, the reality of the world. And one of the reality is impermanence. Impermanence. Everything, impermanence means everything is changing, has the nature to arise 
and pass away. And this is common to every body and everything in the world. Then there is the doctrine of Paticca Samuppada, dependent origination. And so the Dhamma also means the law of cause and effect. If you do good, then that there is a good result. If you do bad, there is a bad, bad result. Now you all know this verse from Dhammapada where you say, Nahi ve re na ve rani sammanti da kudachanang ave re na cha sammanti esa dhammo sanantano. Do you know this gatha? Yes, Venerable Sir. So it says, anger cannot appease by anger. Anger can only be appeased by non-anger. This is the law of the world. Eternal law. Sanatana Dhamma. It's a law. So you see, Dhamma not only means the teachings of the Buddha, it means, it also means truth. It also means the true nature of things. It also means the cause, uh, the law of cause and effect. And so Dhamma also mean a guide or a path to enlightenment, Nibbana, right? There, how, there is how many paths in the Buddha's teaching? One path. E kaya no maggo, one path. That is the Noble Eightfold Path. Anybody remember the eight factors of the Noble Path? I want in English, if you remember. Can you tell me at least one of the eight factors of the path? Right view. Right view. Right intention. Right intention, very good. Right the speech. Right speech. Right action. Right action. Right livelihood. Right livelihood. Very good. Right effort. Right effort. Right mindfulness. Right mindfulness. Right concentration. Right concentration. Very good. So those are the eight factors of the noble path which we all need to practice, right? So Dhamma is considered as a rafter to the shore of freedom. I have put a picture on the screen, on the slide. Do you see? That's called rafter. A person is using a rafter to cross the river. And so, Dhamma is considered as a rafter to the shore of freedom. Freedom what? Freedom of what? Freedom from suffering. And so Dhamma is a path that helps a person to become Arya Puggala. Arya Puggala, noble person. Arya Puggala means someone who reads the stages of enlightenment. Sotapanna, Sakatagami, Anagami, and Arhat, they all are called 
the stages, the four stages of enlightenment. And so, Dhamma means many things, right? So one meaning, Dhamma is the teaching of the Buddha. Another meaning, that Dhamma is the truth of the world, the true nature of the world. Dhamma also means the law of the nature. And Dhamma also means the path that we are following to end the suffering, Dukkha, to reach enlightenment, the goal of the Dhamma. Now, the question arises again, just like in our last meeting, why the Dhamma is called gem? Ratana, Dhamma Ratana, right? Ratana means gem, jewel, something that is valuable. So, it is called gem because it has unique qualities. How many qualities the Dhamma has? Five qualities. Five qualities? Six, six. Or, or six, six qualities? Six qualities. Six qualities. Dhamma has six qualities. But Dhamma is called gem because it is rare. Dullabai. It is valuable. Watinawa. Dhamma is incomparable. Samana kala no haki dea. Nate na dhamme na samate kinchi. Kohetamek enne. Where do you read this one? It's in the Ratana Sutta. When the Buddha was explaining the qualities of the Buddha. Dhamma, Buddha said, Nate na dhamme na samatthi kinchi. There is no comparison with Dhamma. Dhamma is incomparable. Incomparable. Samana. Uh, and then, the last one says, Dhamma is being practiced by wise people, not by unwise people. So these are some of the reasons why Dhamma is called Jem Ratana. So, as we said, there are six qualities that are unique to the Dhamma. Among them, Swakato is the first quality of the, of the Dhamma. Swakato, Swakato, well explained. Swa, well explained by who? by the Blessed One, by the Buddha. Buddha's teaching, the Dhamma is very simple, very clear. Buddha used a very simple and clear language to share his teaching. Now you all know an, another gatha that comes in Dhammapada. What is that? Sabba papas akaranang kusalas upasampada sachitta pariyo dafanang etang buddha nasasanang.
Bikuni, are you trying to call me? Okay, how, how are they going to connect? Okay, let me let me try to connect just a moment. I see there's one, okay. Okay, Sudipani, okay. Good, good, good. Okay, so some of your friends are joining us uh, from a different location. So let's wait until they joined us. Are you there? Ray, Nadiyu, Wani, Sudipani, are you there? Can you hear us? Okay, hopefully they can uh, hear us. Um, so again, the first quality of the Dhamma is Swakato, which means well explained by the Buddha. And so um, Dhamma can be, um, Dhamma is um, simple and clear. As you see in the Dhammapada Gatha, Sabha Papa Sakaranang Kusala Sopa Sampada Sachitta Pariyo Dapanang. Avoid all bad, all unwholesome things, and cultivate wholesome things, good things, good words, good thoughts, and good actions. And then purify, clean your mind. And that's how the Buddha taught his teaching. And then this Dhamma is good and beneficial in the beginning. Adi Kalyanam. Majje Kalyanam. Good in the middle. Paryo Sane Kalyanam. And good in the end. So Buddha's teaching, the Dhamma is good in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. It is pure. It is um, simple and clear um, for whom? For those who wants to practice the Dhamma and experience the liberation, freedom from Dukkha. So the teaching of the Buddha, um, 84,000 teachings of the Buddha. Okay, let me try. That's okay. As long as they can join us, that's good. Okay. Good. And so, Buddha's teaching, the Dhamma is taught to liberate being, suffering brings from the samsara, from the cycle of birth and death. Now you all have heard this phrase, this saying, Buddha has said in one of the teachings that he teach suffering and the end of suffering. The first teachings of the Buddha was about Dukkha because he realized that all beings are experiencing Dukkha. And so there is no word that is um, meaningless. Every word of the Buddha is meaningful, fruitful, helping people to experience Nibbana, enlightenment. So that is why Dhamma is called Swakato because it is well explained, well described by the Buddha, well spoken by the Buddha. That's why we call him, call the Buddha Sugato because he spoke the Dhamma in very clear manner. Next quality 
is called Sandittiko, which means the Dhamma can be experienced in this very life. When we hear the stories of monks and nuns who practice the Dhamma, they experience the fruit of this Dhamma in this very life. And, the ex and, and this is done by experiencing the truth by their own wisdom. And so Dhamma should be experienced. Dhamma should be realized. Now there are three types of wisdom that we all are getting. The first one is called Sutta Maya Panya, which, which means wisdom we gain by listening or reading. And right now we are getting this wisdom, Sutta Maya Panya. You are hearing, listening to me, and so you are learning the Dhamma, you are, you are gaining the wisdom, Sutta Maya Panya. So every time you listen Dhamma, Dhamma talk or read a Dhamma book, then you are gaining Sutta Maya Panya. Then there is the second wisdom called Chinta Maya Panya, which means you think about what you heard what you read in the book, you reflect upon this teaching and you acquire a wisdom, which is called a reflective wisdom. The third one is called Bhavana Maya Panya, which is wisdom you gain by practicing Dhamma, practicing meditation, practicing uh, vipassana, insight meditation. And so, Buddha's teaching is experiential teaching. Until we experience the teaching, then that Dhamma is not our Dhamma. Okay? That Dhamma is not our Dhamma. Only when we experience it, it becomes a Dhamma that pertains to us. And then the fruition of Dhamma can be experienced within seven days according to the Satipatthana Sutra the four foundation of mindfulness. Or according to uh, Bodhiraja Kumara Sutta, one can experience uh, the liberation, the fruition of Dhamma within a day. What are the fruition? The fruition is, fruition mean what? Fruition can monad, pala, me dahame pala monad, api, labagane. That is the four stages of enlightenment. Sotapanna, sagatagami, anagami, arhat. In English, we call it stream winner, once returner, non returner, and fully enlightened. And they are called the fruitions of Dhamma, Pala. Okay, so Sanditiko. The second quality of Dhamma is called Sanditiko, means you can experience the Dhamma in this very life. You don't need to wait until the next but
akaliko, the third um, quality of Dhamma, akalika, akalikai, we say in, in, in Sinhala. In English, akalika means timeless. This Dhamma is timeless and also means that Dhamma gives results here and now. So if you practice the Dhamma, you experience it here and now, not after death. Daruchiriya, a person from South came all the way to where Buddha was living. And this person was old. This person um, wants to hear the words of the Buddha, the Dhamma. He asked the Buddha, Buddha on that day, when he met the Buddha, Buddha was on his arms round, Pindapata. He was, he was on, going on the street to receive food from people. And this person says, Bhante, share your teachings with me. Buddha said, why don't you come to the temple in the evening? This person said, who knows, by, the, by this evening, I may die or you may die. Please teach me your Dhamma in brief at this moment. And Buddha looked at this person and gave a simple Dhamma advice. In seeing, finish in seeing. Sute, sutta matang bhavisati. In hearing, finish in hearing. Like that, only few words. This person becomes anagami, non-returner. And he asks permission to be a monk. But on his way to find a robe, he was um, uh, uh, beaten to death. Uh, he was uh, hit by a bull and he dies. And Buddha tells other monks that this person, Daruchirya, died after becoming enlightened, not before, uh, not after death. So he died. Um, becoming enlightened person. So enlightenment is experienced here and now. That is why this Dhamma is called Akalika. And Akalika also means that the Dhamma should change the person's um, attitude, behavior. And so one who, one who practice the Dhamma there will be transformation in that person. For example, Anguli Mala, a murderer, a violent man, a man who killed so many people after following this Dhamma, there was a big change in his life. He becomes the loving man, loving monk, compassionate monk, and that is because of the quality called akalika. This dhamma is akalika because it has the potential to transform a murderer into a kind, compassionate monk. Akalika. Then, Ehi pasiko, avilla balana, right? Come and see. Dhamma invites people to come and see. Dhamma does not tell people to come and believe. So, Dhamma promotes free will, nidhas chintane, free will. There is no force that you must believe such and such. Buddha, uh, Buddha's teaching never tells people 
that you must be Buddhist first in order to practice the Dhamma. No, Buddha never said. And so Dhamma discourages blind faith. Discourage means what? Encourage kyan ni manuade. Unandu karone ka ni. Encourage kyan unandu karone ka. Discourage kyan ni. But I wouldn't like you keep. I didn't hear that. Unandu nati. Ah. Discourages blind faith under bhakti under vis under viswaseta ulpan dene ne unantu karavani ne that is the quality of dhamma ehi pasiko means it simply say come and see come and examine come and look for yourself right in kalama sutta Buddha said do not believe just because it's in the Scripture, do not believe because it was said by somebody who is well known to the society. Right? Don't believe just because it was, uh, it was he, the person who said was your teacher. So, Dhamma wants us to examine, investigate. Then only believe it, only practice it. And so, ehi pasiko also means that there is no secret in the Dhamma, Guru Musti. There are teachings in the world that teachers do not share everything with students. They have a um, uh, um, they share some secrets with only few students, those students that they like. But in Dhamma, in Buddha's teaching, there is no such thing. Buddha's teaching is open and wide. And because Dhamma is open, it is bright, bright like the sun and moon, right? The more the uh, the more the sun and moon is open, the more it is bright. And Dhamma is open because it is pure. There is nothing to hide. Right? And because of that, Dhamma has the ability to invite Dhamma enthusiasts to examine dhamma into just can another dharma eta ladi dharma dhamma chari dhamma chari sukham seti neda dhammo have rakhati dhamma chari someone who practice the dhamma dhamma will protect this person so, Dhamma is open, is wide, is bright because it is pure. There's nothing to hide. Ehi pasiko means not just come and see, but examine it, question it, right? And learn and practice for your, uh, by yourself, by your own wisdom. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. So, uh, let's go to the next slide. Open I go. Yes. And so open I go mean that each steps leads to the higher steps nearer and nearer to the goal of enlightenment. And so, for example, sila, if you practice sila, morality, 
that will help you to do well in your meditation practice, right? If your sila is pure, your mind can be very calm, very quiet, very serene. But if your morality is not pure, then you cannot practice meditation. So morality helps, sila helps, bhavana, meditation, samadhi. And meditation helps, leads us to panya, wisdom. Wisdom leads to liberation. Pratnyava, pratnyava in apiwa. Unadkarani, sasarin etrakarana, udavinawa. It leads to liberation. So we need morality, meditation, and wisdom in order to reach the goal of enlightenment. What are these three? Morality, meditation, and wisdom. They are okay. Say it again. Okay, what are the sila samadhi panya? Yes, it is the noble eightfold path. Not three characteristics. It, it is the noble eightfold path. Okay, uh, I need to reconnect um, my screen. It went off. Okay, yeah, I didn't check. Okay, so uh, morality, meditation, and wisdom are the three categories of the Noble Eightfold Path. So in morality, three factors come, right speech, right action, and right livelihood. Right, Sumitta? You read that earlier. That is why I asked you to read earlier to see whether you remember the eight factors of the path. So this is another way to look at the path to enlightenment. Morality, again, means the right speech, right action, and right good. Meditation, samatha or samadhi, means what? Right, right effort, effort right, concentration. right mindfulness, right. and right concentration. The three uh, falls into the category of meditation. And what are the two uh, factors that falls into the category of wisdom? right understanding and right intention or right thought. Samma ditti and samma sankappa. So these are, these categories are nothing but the, um, um, the, um, the facet or uh, ways to look at the same path, the noble eightfold path the ekaya namagga, the only path that leads to Nibbana. And so Dhamma has this quality called Opanaiko because a practitioner, a Dhamma practitioner is taken to the goal by step-by-step -step gradual training. This is called the gradual training, peer-watering, peer, -watering, peer -watering. Then the last quality is called pachatang vedita bo vinyo hiti. And it is said, Dhamma is realized by the wise people. Pachatang vedita po. Pachatang mean? Yeah. 
Pachatang Veditabo realized we knew he be the wise people. So here, wise mean who? Is someone who did not go to school? No. Wise person means someone who has right understanding and right thinking, right intention. Right understanding about the truth. The Four Noble Truth. If a person does not have a right understanding of the truth of suffering, the cause of suffering, the cessation of suffering, and the path that leads to cessation of suffering, then that person is unwise. But someone who is um, who has proper understanding of the Four Noble Truths that person is called wise person. When a person has the right understanding, this person gives one's attention to the true nature. So experiencing directly, or direct experience by giving one's attention to the true nature. Okay, it's went again. Okay. So, you all have heard this phrase too. Panya vanta sayang dhammo, nayang dhammo, dupanyasa. This dhamma is for wise people, not for unwise ones. Are you wise people? Are you? Yes, yes of course. You all are on this path. Becoming a nun is the first step to becoming a wise person. You are dedicating your life to understand the Buddha's teaching, Buddha Dhamma. Your attention is on the essential things, Sara Dhamma, essential Dhamma. You are focusing your life on the essential dhamma, a dhamma that leads to the liberation. So these are the called six qualities of the dhamma. And these qualities make the dhamma unique among all the teachings that are available in the world. Buddha's teaching, again, why it is so special, so unique? It is because of these six qualities that Buddha's teaching is unique, flourishing in the world even after 2,600 years. And that's the end of the presentation on um, the qualities of the man.